close your eyes and pay attention to your breath. Notice when it's coming in, notice when it's going out. Notice where you feel the breathing process in the body. It may not be where you expect it. We think of the breath as the air coming in and out of the nose. But there's also the movement of energy throughout the body. And it seems that when the Buddha is talking about that, that's talking about focusing on the breath. That's the part that he wants you to focus on. So you feel movement in the chest, movement in the shoulders, movement in the abdomen. Try to breathe in a way that feels good, nourishing for the whole body. And if your thoughts wander off, you have a choice. You can go with them and continue wandering the way you've been wandering for who knows how long. Or you can come back, come back, come back. Show the mind that you mean business. You're trying to train the habit of staying in place and going only when it's really necessary. We go through life and we have a lot of choices. And one of the reasons we listen to the Buddhist teachings is he, that he gives good advice on how to make good choices. With the precepts, he gives some general principles, and then even more general principles in terms of trying to be harmless in ways that the precepts don't cover. And part of that training in harmlessness is learning how to get your mind under control. Because you can have the best knowledge about what should and shouldn't be done. But if you can't keep it in mind, or can't say no to impulses in the mind, then the knowledge doesn't do much good. So as you're learning concentration, you're learning, one, to get some control over the mind, and two, to learn how to say no to its impulses. You have a clear sense of what you should and shouldn't be done right now. That, the Buddha said, was his primary duty as a teacher, is to give people a basis for deciding what should and shouldn't be done. Because the mind is primarily active. It's constantly looking for things, doing things, making choices. And it needs some good advice, otherwise it ends up making choices that it's going to regret. So for the time being, as you're here meditating, thoughts that have to do with the breath are okay to think about. Any thoughts that are irrelevant, you can put them aside. Just tell yourself it's not the time for them right now. Come back to the breath. Because you want to get to see what, it, what it's really like to stay in one place and have that as your default mode. Most people, the default mode is just to keep on going, going, going. And you want to learn how to stay. And you go out when necessary, but you come back. This way you become more and more reliable inside yourself, and you become your own refuge. We talk about taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. And on the external level, we take them as our examples, and then we internalize that example in the choices that we make. And as you get more reliable in your choices, you find that you have refuge inside, which is where you really need it. Because the dangers lie inside as well. It's like knowing that you have an enemy in this part of the body, and so you put up your defenses in that part. If you have an enemy down in the south of the kingdom, and you put a defense up in the north of the kingdom, the defense isn't going to do much good. You put the defense where you need it, where the danger lies. And as the Buddha said, the main danger lies inside. We can complain about the suffering that comes from outside, the horrible things that people do outside. But the real suffering, the Buddha says, comes from our own actions. And that's a real shame. We want happiness, but we do things that lead to suffering. So he's showing us how not to do that. That's the refuge he's offering us. It's simply up to us to listen to his advice, give it a try, see if it works. And we find that it does work, okay, then that becomes our refuge too.